So if you watched my channel over the last month or so, you know I always gripe about our shop and how I don't plan on staying here for the three years that we signed the lease and that there's a lot of things that I don't like about the shop. So in this video, I guess I'll cover the exact reasons on what I don't like about the shop, what I wish I could change, what, what, it, what it's helped me look forward to for when I'm looking at other shops and hopefully you can take some of that away and you know, kind of use that to filter through your options when you're looking for a shop for your business. These are in no particular number, but starting off with number one is that this is a 1500 square foot shop, right? In total. So there's a 10 by 10 office. There is like a, I don't know, six by six restroom. So it's not a true 1500 warehouse. It's like whatever, uh, whatever square footage is office and restroom and the small little waiting area. And then the rest is going to be warehouse space, right? So in here from day one I said this is not a big warehouse this is not a big unit right and I know a lot of you are like well that's much bigger than my than my than my garage well you know if you take that gym out of here you can make it bigger well if you do this and you do that look a lot of what you decide to do in your business is gonna be completely dictated by your goals in your business what you want to accomplish the type of operation that you want to run so for me Oscar and what I want to do and how we want to do things I hate the small space and I knew it was small to begin with that's what she said but the reason why I stayed that's what she said I'm just kidding no but the reason why I chose it, which I, I mentioned this in a Instagram story, follow me on there, is that it was out of fear that I didn't get a bigger location because it was still like, ooh, can we really take on a $1,600 per month rent and still keep the business growing? And looking back now, what I had, should have done was instead of getting the, the smallest unit they have of 1500 it should have been minimum at least like a 2,000 square foot shop and you know be like whatever office whatever um, 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 warehouse space but it sh I shouldn't have gone with the smallest unit because I was operating out of fear I was like oh what if it doesn't work out I want the lowest price but you know so one big thing that I already knew from the very get-go was like this is gonna be a small shop we can only fit one car yeah if I take the gym away a car and a half two cars but even then it's not gonna make or break the, the difference like I still hate how how small this space is and I just I don't like the space all right so number two is that this office space is a 10 by 10 and this is everything that we have here this is one office space or office desk here's the other office desk and there's not much as you can see here it's pretty cluttered and it's not that we need to like it's not like, oh, we'll organize it better. Well, how, no, dude, it's like, there's just a lot of things that we need to carry. Like, there's a lot of things that you need in an office. Like, there's just a lot of things you need to carry. And this being such a small office, this is the only AC room. This is the only room in this unit, right? So, as far as breaks, as far as break room, as far as kitchenette, as far as area where people can wait, this is the only technically, you know, this is the only room that people could be in. So when we all have lunch, we're all crammed in here. Um, when I when I need to do any work like podcasts or work on videos or whatever, like it's very difficult to stay productive and creative in a super small bunched up space. When you're bunched up, when there's no room, when you can't like spread your legs, you know, theoretically, which is like, you know, you can't, you can't, there's no room for, it's gonna sound funny, but there's no room for ideas. There's no room for creativity. There's no room to be efficient. Like when you're in a cramped office space, when you're in a cramped warehouse, it just like, it clutters your thinking. And I, I mean, like for me, and I don't mean creative as far as like, hey, I have to make a YouTube video. Like, although that's a part of it, but another creative part is like thinking about the business, thinking about the strategy, thinking about an offer, thinking about how we're gonna plan the next three months. Like that, and it's like, you, it's hard to do that in this cluttered room because there's no space. Like, I, I mean, I hope, like, I hope that that's making sense, but like if you have a cluttered space, if you have a cluttered area, if there's too much activity compacted into one thing, you can't think as well. So aside from just not being able to move and like I'm stuck in this little corner, it also limits the creative juices that you have in order to grow your business. So this one I wasn't really expecting, but if you see behind me, right, it looks like a pretty spacious, enough space for vehicles to park. Now what you'll constantly find with a lot of these business parks is that there's actually not a lot of parking. Once like all those spots are filled 
it seems so cramped in the parking lot where there's literally no space to move around and there's very very limited parking here so it's like if you don't get here soon enough where do you park right and even at other locations that I've seen recently right because we haven't seen other locations is that a lot of other locations have this same thing where it just it's not made for like you know excess amount of parking right so it's again like it depends on your goals because I just like if, if it's my choice to have like something that I want it's like I don't want a cramped parking lot I don't want a cramped office space I don't want a cramped warehouse space like, I just I just don't want that like, I don't want to put up with that so for me when it's a completely jammed out packed parking lot because it's not even that big to begin with it's just like I just want to get out of there it's like I just want people to move away because like I don't I don't like the clearness because right now I believe there's still three to four other units being built out for the tenants to move in so already right now at certain times of the day the parking lot is already filled and that's not including the three or four other units that still have to be finished so the tenants can move in and are they bringing two employees with them four employees with them five employees like each business how many employees are they bringing the parking lot will 100 percent always be completely uh, uh, um, maxed out so it looks very spacious like it looks very nice but it's not once all the cars are filled you can only move so much it's hard to move cars around it gets really crammed cars are already coming in and out it's annoying it's annoying sorry for all the wind but this one is my fault where i didn't check to see if every unit has a spigot this is one of four spigots located on this business park every unit has no water spigot you have to come to the side of the building to get water now i could actually make this work and we could get a spigot installed but given what we want to do now it's just not something that i want to move forward with so it is an option when you are looking for your spots make sure that you ask hey can we install a water spigot is that okay because usually not usually but depending on who you're working with the lease the length they're able to accommodate you on certain build outs to include what you need so next one has to do with the waiting area now to be honest not many customers wait here most of the time let's say 85 percent of the time they drop off their vehicle but because it's a, such a small location and you're limited on room this is going to be the waiting area you have the office and the waiting area and the waiting area is right in fr first of all there's no ac on there but second it's right in front of the office so every time someone is sitting here waiting for their vehicle they're just waiting and you open the door it's always that awkward like you know it's that awkward like who are you not who are you but you know it's like oh hey yeah i'm waiting for my car so that always makes it a little awkward and it's like again there's no ac here very limited on what we can do so a, a, a big thing of this comes down to like the space um again it, could i like you don't know what you don't know until you know you know so it's not like i had the 2020 vision to look back and be like you know what i'm gonna regret doing that no it's a part of the process as i always say progress over perfection like are these mistakes that i would love to have avoid yeah but who's you know i'm not playing monday morning quarterback i'm i'm, I'm make we're making decisions based on how we're currently moving and you know we just live and learn like that's another part of growing a business like you're gonna make mistakes you're gonna lose money you're gonna have headaches some are gonna be good some are gonna be great some are gonna be terrible what do you want to do you just keep on moving forward next is there's no drain in this unit so that means we have to put everything on this water reclamation mat once we're done washing or doing whatever we're do that we're doing we have to vacuum everything up and dispose of it like that and that adds so much more time and headache and hassle to the day-to-day -day operation it is very very annoying same thing with the water spigot i should have foreseen that i didn't it's still on mine it is what it is now again it all goes like you can negotiate a lot of things for instance we could like if i would have done everything again like from the very get-go even now we can install a drink we can install a water spigot i just don't want to at this point because i'll let you guys know in another in another video but when i was looking at another unit across like literally at the same business park but across the another unit 
we asked, hey, can we put a drain and a water spigot? And they said, yeah, let me see. And we started talking about adding a drain and a water spigot. So it's not like you can't. It's just when you're talking and negotiating and, and, and talking about the build out, you ask what you can get and if they can work with it, they can. Again, it's gonna, location to location, it's going to be different. For instance, we looked at another location that was 4,000 square feet, but it was a standalone building in like almost some residential area. And because they didn't have a water line or because the size of the water and septic whatever was small, you're much more limited on at it. Location will matter significantly on what they can do or if they're gonna include it in the build outs or if it's gonna be on your responsibility and perhaps they can give you like one month's free rent or something. You're gonna negotiate all of it. So we currently are looking at other locations, not that we're gonna move in next month, but it is always planning for the next step. Like I said, I'm not staying here. Like I, I don't like coming here. I don't like coming here. It doesn't motivate me to come here. It, it's, a, it's like I don't get any creative empowerment or creative flow like when I'm in the office. Like there's no creativity flowing through that shop. And it's not to be like a Debbie Downer, like well, that's a good enough shop because I have, you know, my little two car garage and I can do everything out of there. It's like, bro, I, we all have different businesses. We all have different goals. Whatever you want to achieve, whatever you want to do, whatever height you want to bring, you want to take your business to, that's on you. Like you do what you do, you do what you like, you keep all that money in your pocket, don't go get a shop, don't go get a van, like you do whatever you want to do. I have my own goals, I have my own plan, I know what I want to do and a part of that is not having some small little 1500 square foot shop where I don't like being, where it doesn't motivate me to be there, where I don't get excited every morning to be like, oh, let me go to that small little shop right there. No, that's, that's not what I'm in, like I don't want that. So that's why we're gonna look at other shops, that's why I have my own goals and I know what we wanna achieve and I know the revenue point we wanna be at and I know what we're gonna be doing over the next 12 months. And it's just, you run your business however you want. If you want a shop, if you want a 1500, a 2500, if you just wanna stay in your garage, completely up to you. You don't care about what anyone says because it's your business. You do what you wanna do because it's your business. So anyways, hopefully this video helped you out in any regard. Ask me some questions in the comment section of some shops that you're looking at, um, some questions that you have, some maybe things I can, I can help you out with. So, you know, if I can help you with anything, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, you can check the description box down below for the ultimate guide to start your detailing business. You can check out my podcast, the Detailing Business Class Podcast. You can, it's streaming on Spotify, iTunes, Google Podcasts. And if you're in Houston, Texas, and you want us to detail your vehicle, interior cleaning, paint correction, ceramic coating, any of that, you can check out below for a form to fill out and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, talk to you later.